Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how to manufacture a fish feeder for your aquaponics system. Here you have the automatic fish feeder. This is the hopper with the drive motor and the auger which is in here. If you look at the inside of this, this is a used um, kitty litter uh, box and we cut one apart. We used part of that for the inside here, this taper. And if you look close, you can see in here there's an auger. That auger is a auger bit. And you can see I still have the uh, cutting edge in there. Um, it's out of the way as that auger spins. Uh, it will deliver the fish food. Okay, it's powered by a DC uh, gearhead motor, so it'll turn real slow. It has a real high torque, and as, as long as it's turning, it'll be screwing the feed out of the bottom of this and into the uh, fish. This will be mounted over top. Uh, this is easy to make. It's uh, waterproof. I, that's one reason I used the plastic instead of trying to engineer it out of metal. And uh, it's light. Two of these went together real well and the lid snapped shut. And it's large enough that it will hold a couple weeks worth of food in here. And uh, it'll be powered by an Adreno. Uh, circuit board. The Adreno board, uh, you can get these uh, off the internet. Uh, you plug this into the computer. It's a circuit board, a, a computer logic board, and this will allow you to time when the uh, feeder will turn on, how long it turns on, and uh, it would be a variable, variable uh, control. Uh, the other solution that could be used would be creating your own logic using an IC chip or a couple of them, uh, the 555s, and those are timer, IC timers. And uh, either solution will work, and that will be our next uh, step is powering up the feeder. The parts you're going to need for this fish feeder, the hopper is going to be made from this kitty litter box, and we're going to need two of these. We want a hopper large enough that's going to hold enough feed that uh, you don't have to keep refilling. And one will be the hopper, the other one is going to be used for uh, internal parts. We need to cut this apart for the plastic. And the lid that's on these are real nice. It makes it easy to fill and snap closed. Okay. And you notice uh, how they slide together so it'll make the parts good. And this was made, manufactured so that they could stack them. But we're going to take advantage of this uh, taper that's in there. So we're going to use, that's going to be of use to us here. The other thing you're going to need is an auger. And you can get these real cheap at uh, yard sales or flea markets. And uh, I think I paid maybe 50 cents a piece. This one, because it was shiny and clean, I think I paid a dollar. But you can see here someone had already cut the uh, auger end off. <clears throat> this goes into the brace and bit, or the brace, and uh, that was cut off, and then it was crudely machined down to a quarter inch diameter so it could fit into a power drill. Um, you can cut the ends off, but that's not necessary. I'm going to leave this one just as it is, and uh, these I'm not going to use. Then we need a, a gear motor. This is a gearhead motor. 
this is going to drive the auger and what we'll need to do is uh, connect it and I have here two different hoses these are both quarter inch internal the one is a fuel line hose the other is just a, a vinyl the vinyl fits fairly snug onto this uh, gear motor and it's a loose fit on the hose but because the gear motor has a flat I'm going to put a spacer in there slide this on and then it's going to be connected here's some other parts we're using pop rivets but because we're pop riveting into plastic you want to buy some pop rivet washers these are eighth inch washer and I'm using aluminum because uh, it will be in a moist environment and uh, aluminum pop rivets uh, then hose clamps. I purchased uh, the spring clamps. These are the ones that I want to use. And I also purchased the ones that will screw. This will come down on to the uh, fuel line hose. So this would be adequate. These would be work okay too. And we need mounting methods. So this uh, Gearhead motor is going to be held into the bu bucket or the hopper, and I'll have backed that up with the uh, washers. And the auger is going to fit into a tube. I'm using a piece of PVC, and this makes a nice fit. The other ones are a little loose but I really don't think it would make any difference. I think it would work just as well having that little bit of slop in there. And uh, the timing method uh, to set this, uh, there's a number of different ways. This is an Adreno. I'm not gonna open it. Um, being sealed like this protects against static uh, damage. So we're going to leave this in here until it's going to be used. You can use an Adreno uh, circuit board and there's uh, thousands of programs that can be downloaded. It's freeware. Or you can use uh, IC circuits. I like the, to use uh, the 555 which is a timer and I may make uh, the timing circuit with the 555s. So there's a number of ways to go with the timing. But first, we're going to throw the hopper together uh, with the uh, mechanics, the auger and the gear motor head. The auger tube is running the entire length of the bottom of the bucket, and it's hitting the end that curves. So I'm going to uh, trim this end off to match the curve. I'm going to cut that off at that angle, so when it goes in, it'll meet that curve on the inside of the bucket. We're going to make that cut first before we cut it to length. Um, in case we mess this up, we can keep chopping those ends. So we're going to try to use this and I don't know how it will function on an angle. Maybe a little bit of fouling. We'll see how that'll fit inside. The other end of the auger tube will protrude the opposite end of the bucket by about an inch, inch and a half. Trim all the burrs uh, from any of the manufacturing of this or any of the cutting. Uh, this would not be good for the fish to ingest this. It could kill them. I'm laying out where the gearhead motor is going to be mounted. Uh, the shaft to the gearhead motor is offset. It's not dead center coming out of the gearhead. So I'm laying out where I want the center of the shaft and then I'm going to mark 
the exterior of the gearhead motor so that I can drill holes for the mounting screws. I'm marking the location of the screws on the perimeter of the gearhead so that I can locate on the bucket where I need to drill the holes for the mounting screws. After locating where to drill the holes for the mounting screws, I'm going to use a bit that's slightly larger than the diameter of the screw threads. This give, gives me some variation for uh, air, possible air when I'm uh, drilling and laying out. After the gearhead motor is mounted into the bucket, the auger shaft is then inserted and attached to the gearhead motor. At this time the auger shaft can be slid onto the auger. The auger shaft has to have a slot cut in the top surface so that uh, the food can make its way into the auger bit. Um, I found the best way to do this is not what I'm doing here. The best way is to use my bandsaw and cut this slot out and that's what I eventually did on this uh, particular job. During assembly the auger tube will be held into position with two pan head screws these are sheet metal screws that will be attached from the underside of the bucket and this is where I'm drilling the pilot holes for those screws and then I'm going to attach that into the auger tube from the underside. The auger tube now is having its pilot holes bored. I'm using a utility knife to uh, cut the parts that I need from the second bucket. Be extremely careful using this type of a knife. I'm making very small shortcuts and I'm trying to do each cut with uh, very good control. Most people that I know that use these have given themselves a pretty good cut. A little bit of trimming on these upper flanges will give us a perfect fit when we insert it inside the bucket. This insert will be held in its permanent position by the use of pop rivets. When you're using the pop rivets, make sure that on the end, the beaded end of the rivet, you use the pop rivet washer. If not, that bead will pull through the plastic. I'm securing the auger tube to the bottom of the bucket. The gearhead motor is snug and secure. The auger bit, you can see the cutting edge still there. The uh, auger spirals itself at the bottom of the feed tube. And here we snap the uh, lid on. The lid also is easy to open and close. It snaps securely. That will keep bugs and little varmints out of your bin. Thanks for watching my friends. Bye bye.